Hey everybody, this is Shane. I have another review today. It's been a good while since I've done one of these, but I have another firearm review I'm going to do. Now, I know there's literally a million videos of this one all over YouTube. I know if you type in Mosin the Gaunt, you're going to get all kinds of videos about whatever about the Mosin the Gaunt. Well, Today I'm going to be reviewing the model 9130 Mosin the Gaunt. This was the standard service rifle of Russia, specifically the Soviet Union. Now, the weapon was originally designed in 1891 by Captain Sergei Mosin and Leon the Gaunt. Now, Sergei Mosin designed the rifle itself, whereas... Whereas Leon the God, he actually designed the Fox magazine for the weapon. Alright. Making another on camera appearance. But before we do anything, we're going to do a safety check of the weapon. And just to help with this this time. Just so you see, there is nothing in the chamber. There's nothing in the magazine. Now, like I said, this weapon was originally designed in 1891. It was designed by Ser Captain Sergei Mosin of the Imperial Russian Army and Leon Nagant, who was a Belgium. Now, uh, Nagant is responsible for this portion of the weapon, the actual magazine of the weapon. Now, the rifle itself is chambered for 7.62 by 54 rimmed, or 7.62 by 54 R. Now, here is the round itself. As the designation implies, it has this nice thick rim right here. The way you load it, As you can see, there's a guide right here. Now, you can load it one of two ways. You can either load them one at a time, or you can use a stripper clip. Now, I'm not going to do a... I'm not going to actually load the weapon itself. I'll make a separate video as far as how to use a stripper clip or how to actually load them individually. But for now, I'm just going to do a video on the weapon itself. Now, um, your, your greater majority of them, about 95, 97% of them are in that caliber. Now, if you're talking like Finnish uh, versions of the Mosin Nagant, then you're talking 7.62 by 53 R. Um, if you're talking Polish variants of this rifle, then you're talking German 8mm, or 7.92 by 57. I mean, I can make a completely separate video. I can do a series of videos going about the entire history of the weapon itself, but to sum it up, it's been in virtually any conflict that has occurred since the since the turn of the 20th century. Um, but just the Russians alone have made 37 million of these rifles. This is almost like the AK of the bolt action world. They're everywhere. They're rugged. They're reliable. They're accurate. Now the set of sights that the 9130 has is different from the previous Model 91, because whereas the original 91 was measured in what's called arshins, uh, this is actually graduated in meters. Now this goes from 100 meters all the way out to 2,000 meters. If you can hit something with this at 2,000 meters, you're a damn good shot. But the effective range of this weapon, open sighted, is approximately 500 meters. That's the effective range 
open sights. Now, if you're talking about with a optic of some kind, then you're talking about 800 meters. And the Russians put these to damn good effect in World War II as sniper weapons. Of course, the most famous of these snipers, uh, most if people are familiar with them, is Vasily Zaitsev. And the only reason most people are familiar with him is from the movie Enemy at the Gates. But there was a ton of Russian snipers that used this particular weapon. Um, if you actually pick this up, I wouldn't say new, but if you actually got it from a shop that got this from an importer, then you would have got a nice little load of accessories for this. You would have also got a bayonet. You would have got a pair of ammunition pouches, an oiler, a uh, pouch for the oiler, a few maintenance tools, sling. Basically, you would got yourself a nice little startup kit for a rival. Best part, um, despite how many of these rivals there are, none of them are really bad. They're all high quality rifles. And the, okay, in case some of you are wondering, like my example right here, Mine is a 1943 Aishevek. There were two arsenals in Russia. You have Aishevek and you have Tula. Your, let's see if I can actually show it. But, right here is a triangle with an arrow in it. This is Aishevek. If this was Tula, it would have been a star, uh, typically with an arrow. A star with an arrow. Or I have seen some that were like hey, a star with a sickle and hammer. And of course you have your crest for the Soviet Union. You'll have your date just below the Soviet crest. But again, these are excellent weapons. Uh, just give an idea how good these are. Um, the uh, Mujahideen of Afghanistan were using these against the Soviets. And some of our boys in Afghanistan are still coming across most of the dots over there. Matter of fact, um, it's, it's actually kind of gotten common for these insurgents, for these terrorists to be using most of the dots, to be using Mausers, Enfields, older bolt-action rifles because they're generally renowned for their accuracy. Well, our boys were also encountering these things over in Iraq. And, I mean, there's still some countries that have these actually as second-line weapons, actually. I mean, as I said, they're great weapons. I cannot knock anything against the Mosin Nagant. I mean, sure, they may look ugly as hell. Some of them may have an action that's a little stiffer to operate. But, with a Mosin Nagant, you are guaranteed accuracy, you're guaranteed reliability, you're guaranteed simplicity, but I mean, again, I could go on and on and on and on about about the Mosin-Nagant. There's just so much to talk about the Mosin-Nagant rifle, but um, I mean, for roughly the $130 to $180 range, it really just depends on where you buy it. If you're talking like a gun show, you're talking close to $200. From a dealer who's out of his mind for a base at 9130. But, um, I mean, I acquired mine, tax and all, for about 125 with all those accessories that I mentioned. I probably ran about 80 rounds through this rifle. I have hit my target every single time with this thing. But,. The ammunition, them, the ammunition rather for them is inexpensive, and you're talking power almost equivalent to that of a 30 ot six. I've heard some people refer to this as the Russian 30 ot six, but you can still find the surplus ammunition for this. Uh, the round this weapon shoots has the distinction of the longest-serving military cartridge in the world. It's been in service for 120 years plus and counting. This round is still used in machine guns. It's still used in sniper rifles. It's still used in lots of different weapons.
but if you want me to give you my opinion, absolutely dead solid weapon. Um, I really wouldn't knock anything against the weapon itself personally. It may not have the usability of some other weapons, but it does have its uses in other er, in other areas. But that's another video for me to discuss on. But if you want me to give you my opinion, if you're wanting a good hunting rifle, you can't go wrong. Like I said, there's 37 million of them. I mean, even if you cut the stock down, which I personally advise against, um, you're seriously like, really not going to hurt the market value of the weapon itself. You're just going to be hurting cosmetics. Um, if you want a nice historical weapon, I mean, this was the weapon of revolution in Russia. This was the weapon to help the Russians win the Great Patriotic War. Um, I know there was something else I was going to say about this rifle. Um, there's a ton of different variants. Like I just said, I can make a separate video for just all the different variations of this weapon. All the various markings, various countries that made these. But, um, I might just make a separate series of videos just for the most of them that gone here. Because there's just so much to talk about with the weapon. But, I mean, you're not going to go wrong. It's inexpensive, it's reliable, it's powerful, it's accurate. And you can pretty much do pretty much whatever the blue hell you want with one of these. You're not going to hurt the thing. The only way you're seriously going to keep the weapon from manufacturing, from, well, excuse me, from out. The only way you're going to keep this weapon from firing, really, is either you completely remove the bolt or you run over it with a tank. That's really the only way you're going to keep this weapon from firing. The rugged, reliable, accurate, powerful, inexpensive. You're talking an all-around dead solid weapon. But that's really just my personal take on the Russian M9130 Mosin You all have a good day.